next there will be a presentation of team triple point with the title a proposal on effective anti fouling system please welcome team tipping point with a big hand
secondary biocides, which is harmful to the ocean ecosystem. The graph below shows the amount of copper flowing per unit area and wetty surface area. For these, it can be seen that about 11 kg of copper is released per day from a container ship, which has wetty surface area of 14,000 square meters. Another alternative, silicon chlorine cracks within two years in water and releases silicon oils that have potential for environmental impact. These coatings are really 100% effective in preventing the attachment and growth of all biofouling. The picture shows that even after applying anti-fouling paints, marine organisms adhere to her surface over time. So, so we propose to prohibit the use of anti-fouling paints and the and to encourage the use of her coat paint instead. Usually, anti corrosion paint, anti falling paints, and high coat paints, which combines them, are applied with her surface. In other words, our proposal is to apply her coat paint over TC paint instead of, AM, instead of AM paint. This is because herbal paints uh, contain less harmful substances and do not peel up easily. However, herbal paints do not contain biocides, falling occurs easily and quickly, and requires more frequent cleaning of the hull. Then, how regularly should this happen? We claim this to be once every Month. That's because the development from microfalling to macrofalling increased softly after three months. The pie chart shows that macrofalling, which was 50%, increased to 51% after three months. According to MPC 62, it is said that microfalling can be removed easily and quickly. Therefore, three months is the appropriate interval before microfalling begins to grow. In addition to cleaning interval, cleaning methods should also be, able, also be considered. Current methods include in water and dry the cleaning, but these have some drawbacks. <coughs> the biggest problem with in water cleaning is that the cleaning tool do not collect earth fallen debris and facilitate the translocation of harmful marine species. <coughs> Secondly, the, diver, the, the labor of diver costs are expensive. The dry dump method uses high pressure water jet to clean the hull, but the paint is peeled off and needs to be repainted. Secondly, time, speed, and cost constraint make this method difficult to regularly carry out. So, cleaning method need improvement. The conditions for proper cleaning are as follows. First, it must hold all the debris. Second, the process must be appropriate. Taking a tanker as an example, 1.6 million US dollar is paid for increased for consumption annually. The cost for improved cleaning methods should be less than this cost. Third, the processing speed must be fast. Cleaning should be completed while ships are dug in the harbor. Uh, uh, while ships are dug in the harbor. Um, For a tanker with wet surface area of 13,000 square meter, it take, um, the average burn time is 17 hours. So it is appropriate 
to clean a speed 1,000 to 1,500 square meter per hour. An example of improved method is a underwater cleaning robot, which is currently under development or in use in many countries. This will be one of the best cleaning equipment if it meets the condition we mentioned we mentioned above. So far, um, we pointed out the shortcoming of current anti falling system and suggested alternative accordingly. The next present tool will present our proposals and the advantages of them. Our three proposals are ban, ban the use of anti falling paint, and load her cleaning equipment instead. To prevent the build of the metal, the hull must be cleaned once every three months. We can expect three effects from this proposal reduce fuel consumption and greenhouse gas emission, and reduce the risk of spreading in marine invasive species and the reduced expenses due to the cost effectiveness of this method. According to ABP C62, her cleaning can reduce her cleaning can reduce greenhouse fuel consumption and greenhouse gas emission. In the graph below, it shows it can be seen how much resistance is generated by cleaning once every every 200 days and every after dry dock cleaning. However, we suggested that an extra gain occurs as much as the difference between these two lines if you clean once every three months. A second advantage is also mentioned in the above MEPC62. By cleaning it once every three months, the, even the invisible part can be cleaned out. Eventually, the number and abundance of invasive species will be significantly reduced, and the, eco the likelihood of ecosystem disturbances will also be reduced, as shown in the graph below. The last advantage is the cost benefit. Frequent hair cleaning costs a lot, but it is less than the cost of additional fuel consumption and green additional fuel consumption and and lose lose of income during relocation and docking time and dive labor and so on due to fouling of the ship to which the current system is applied. In our in our in this presentation, we gave our suggestion in anticipation of these three advantages to MEP C sixty two annex. First, we would ban and remove biofouling resistance material. Instead, we support the usage of the toxic hard paint that do not contain biocide, which serves to which which serves only to protect the bottom surface. Next. Here are some factors to consider when choosing an anti fouling system. And we added two factors to, to the current document. And lastly, finally, this is our proposal to the annex and to the annex to re currently regulating the TPT. And these are our references. And I'd like to conclude by saying that our proposal will become a tipping point to developing a better marine environment. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Tim Kevin Collins. Great session. Professor Daniel Bond, please. Thank you, Tipping Point. Uh, you just done the presentation on proposal effective and Regarding the uh, presentation made by Tipping Point, uh, 
Um, any question to me? Okay, I'll go for strangers first, followed by. Okay, I'll go later. Yeah, hello, we're strangers. I feel gratitude for your presentations. I want to ask you a pretty simple question. I think one of the reasons why not TBT not be used anymore is maybe non biodegradable substance. And this characteristic is really critical to be damaged in relation to degradation. So that's why most, most of this stuff cannot be used. But, recent, but recently, I, I've seen research that TBT, this kind of stuff, can be separated because the microorganism, like T. bacillus, uh, can help to separate this kind of stuff chemically and biologically. So have you ever thought about this kind of ways to solve your problems? Uh, one of the biggest reason why not be why not TBT not be used is non biodegradable substance. Recently, I I seen research on that T. bacillus kind of microorganism can help to separate TBT chemically and biologically. So I think there is a possibility to supplement uh, existing these advantages like non biodegradable characteristics of TBT. So it is usable may maybe by using TBT because there is a microorganism that is uh, contributes to, to uh, separate like toxicity of TBT. First off, thank you for asking. Uh, but I'm not good at chemical or biological that uh, TBT uh, persists in water and cause deformation in some kinds of still life. So I am a regulate it. Uh. Okay. Um, I think that uh, questions. Well. No questions. I take it as a comments regarding the presentation on uh, on the anti-farm system and by the tipping point. And then uh, I would, I'd like to come to yes, uh, very keen yes. Uh, this is a speaker from the team Perukim. First of all, thank you for a remarkable speech and I comprehend the overall contents you presented. Uh, however. UT imposed that the ban on the use of anti-polling paints would be one of the solutions to IMO. So I was wondering if there would be any detail you have in mind as to how and with what sort of methodology to ban on the, to ban on the use of anti-polling paint. Uh, so could you answer about this question, please? Um, thank you for a great question. Um, Thank you for your answer. Okay, 
Um, there we go. Yes, I don't know, five minutes is more. Um, So we are CFPs and we are very impressed with your presentation, so I will just ask a very simple question. That we have noticed that, that, that you are trying to pose is that you are introducing a new way of an effective way to clean the home, is it? But what we have noticed that we already have the introduction of eco-friendly cold paint that it has been already on the field. And, but why don't we use the eco-friendly paint which is avoiding the anti-falling bug itself? And what, is, what could be so effective to you use your method instead of using anti-fouling system that is at front? Thank you. Um, thank you for asking. Uh, I mentioned in my presentation, uh, even if it is eco-friendly, uh, no method can be 100% eff efficient. Uh, even if you use eco-friendly anti-falling paints, falling eventually occurs. Uh, so you should clean whole. Uh, but our suggestion is not to use preventive method, but to manage falling by frequently clean the hole. The current system, the cost of the cost caused by increased fuel consumption is 1.6 million dollars a year when done with the current systems, and dive labor cost is 62,000 dollars. So by one year standards, the cost of current system is 1.6 million dollars of increased fuel consumption and 62,000 dollars of time labor costs and a loss of income during the relocation and docking time. So in total, it is about 1 million 700,000 dollars. But our, but according to our findings, we mentioned equipment we mentioned is price about 400,000 dollars and it can clean all of the heart within 10 hours. So the cost of robot cleaning every once every three months is $400,000 of robot's price and $40,000 of its operating cost. In total, it is about $500,000. So cleaning her once every month with equipment can save about $1,200,000. It's a great answer. Okay, I'll take one more question if we have time. Yes. Secure, please. Uh, thank you for your wonderful presentation. We are Team C Korea and we want to ask one simple question. If I understood cor correctly, I believe all of the benefits that you have explained is based on the assumption that the ship owners will change their ships to hard paint hard coat painting and that they will remove fouling as more often than the current status quo. But if I if I am a ship owner, what kind of incentive will the ship owner have in having to spend extra money and economic costs in having to change all of these things and also even if they change to hard coating painting, will that have any incentive for them to having to remove more often even though the cost might cost less than the current status quo? But and simple answer, please. Many people think that um, ship owners don't like to clean her once every three months because of cost and time issues. However, our suggestion is not to take the time to clean the herb, but to clean the herb when the ship is in a harbor. The apparent time is first time is. 18 hours for large vessels and 15 hours for medium vessels. And uh, it takes about 10 hours when coming her of a large 
ships with immersed surface of 13,000 square meter at the rate of 1,000 to 1,500 square meter per hour with a demand. And cost, cost problem is we mentioned Okay, thank you. It's time up and I have to conclude this Q&A session for Tipping Points PT. Thank you, Tipping Points. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.